So when we talk about energy changes in nuclear reactions, this is the day you came to college, you wanted to come to college. Because the, there is a relationship that shows how much energy is going to be involved in a nuclear reaction. And that equation is Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared. So when we're doing this, the E is the energy in the nuclear reaction, and we use units of joules typically for that. For the lowercase m, that's the mass, and you have to be remember that mass has to be in kilograms, not grams in this case. And then C we've used before, that's the speed of light. which is a constant, and that's in units of meters per second. So when we're looking at these energy changes in nuclear reactions, what we are really looking at is a change in energy is equal to the change in mass times the square of the speed of light. And when we're doing these, we want to get some comparison for a chemical reaction versus, for example, a nuclear reaction. So, for example, if we're talking about the radioactive decay, we can look at something like uranium-238 undergoing alpha decay to make thorium 234, the energy change for that process is on the order of 4 times 10 to the 11th joules, and that's a negative, that's an exothermic process for that radioactive decay. If we look at the combustion of methane, for example, producing carbon dioxide and water, the energy change for that is about negative 8.2 times 10 to the 6th joules. So there's about five zeros different, five orders of magnitude difference between a nuclear reaction and a chemical reaction. So that's why a lot of people are interested in nuclear energy as an energy source because you do get a whole lot more energy out of it. Okay. So there's two different types of nuclear reactions that release energy. The first of these is going to be fragmentation of heavy nuclides. We call that process fission. And it's important to remember that we're only talking about heavy nuclides fissioning as an energy release process. The other kind of process that releases energy is going to be when we combine light nuclides. And we, when we combine light nuclides, we call that fusion. But again, it's important to remember that this only involves light nuclides. So this is somewhat interesting, because in one case, you have fission giving off a lot of energy, but in another case, you have fusion being exothermic, giving off energy. So why does that happen? 
it must be that somewhere between the heavy and the light nuclides, there must be some nuclide that is going to be much more stable. And so either fission or fusion, being exothermic, indicates that there's a nuclide in the middle somewhere that all ones are trying to get as stable as. And the nuclide that is the most stable is going to be iron 56. So when we talk about heavy for uh, an exothermic nuclear reaction, we're talking about any nuclide that has a higher mass than iron 56. Or when we're talking about uh, fusion, fusion will be exothermic as long as it involves nuclides lighter than iron 56. So that is the most stable isotope. And that's probably why a lot of times in um, asteroids, you find a lot of iron present. So meteors, meteorites, they have a lot of iron in them because they've gone through all the nuclear reactions out in space and have gone down to, gotten to the most stable isotope, which is iron 56. So we can look at the energy changes in a nuclear reaction by looking at the change in mass for a nuclear reaction. And this is the last problem that we have today. So in this one, I wanted to calculate the energy change associated with the beta decay of cobalt-60. And I think in, in your worksheet, I gave you the nuclear equation that's involved there. But what I give you is I give you the mass of the nucleus of cobalt-60. I give you the mass of the nickel-60 nucleus. And then I give you the mass of an electron. Now, why would I give you the mass of an electron in this case? What kind of decay is it? And a beta particle is essentially an electron. So based on that equation that's on your work, worksheet, you need to calculate the mass change, products minus reactants, and then calculate the energy change. <laughs> so in this case, we have our nuclear equation, and we know we're going to use delta E equals delta M times C, and don't forget to square the C. So the first thing we need to find is delta M. And when you're doing a change, it's always the final minus the initial, the products minus the reactants. So in this case, the products are going to be the nickel 60, which is um, 59.915428, plus the electron, which is 5.4858 times 10 to the negative fourth grams per mole. They are really long numbers. And then the cobalt-60 on the reactant side is 59.919007. And so your change in mass should be something on the order of a negative 0 0.003030 grams, which of course you want to convert to kilograms because in this Einstein equation, mass has to be in kilograms. So we're talking about negative 3.030 times 10 to the negative 6 kilograms as your delta M. So then delta E equals negative 3.030 times 10 to the negative 6 kilograms times 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second and you square that and you should end up with negative 2.72 times 10 to the 11th joules. Where do you get joules? You get joules because one joule equals one kilogram meter squared per second squared. That's the definition of a joule. <laughs>